According to our Adam Schefter, Vernon Davis said a few days ago he would attend camp, but apparently changed his mind. He was not present at camp on Tuesday. Davis wants a new contract, and he, along with offensive lineman Alex Boone, did not attend. Jim Harbaugh on the no-show, quote, disappointed in the decision for them not to be here. There was a voluntary segment to the offseason, and we appreciate those other guys volunteering to make the team better. Now it's mandatory, and I wish they could have. This is not the decision I envision being the 49er way. Davis has uh, two years left on a five-year, $37 million deal. We're putting Vernon Davis on the hook. The question is, whose side are you on? We welcome in our NFL analyst, Jerome Bettis. I call him the bus. The bus is back. The bus is back. <laughs> yeah. We missed you. Thank you. You were correct you about the Spurs, huh? Are you Big also boy. An I, I was. I, I know. I, I said I was. I was disappointed in Miami. I was actually rooting for Miami, but I was impressed mm -hmm. at how the Spurs mm -hmm. uh, dismantled. <laughs> dismantled. I, I was impressed by that, but I was very disappointed in how the how the Heat uh, showed. He just used the word dismantled. The bus did. That's God. that's that's appropriate, is it not? Well, I know, but I, I'm just shocked that you're, we're saying that the Spurs dismantled the Miami Heat, which yeah. they did. Yeah. Uh oh, and he loves every moment yeah. of it. Whose side are you on? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm mixed. I'm on Vernon Davis' side in the sense that I understand you have a short window. You've got to take advantage of, of your opportunities. When you're playing above uh, what they're paying you, there should be a change. But I'm also of the mindset that you do it when there's one year left on your contract, not when there's two years left okay. on the contract. So, uh, it, you know, it, it's a situation where Vernon Davis... I understand what he's thinking, but I don't think right now is the right thing to do with two years left. I probably would have gone to the mini camp uh, and showed my face and showed mm -hmm. the goodwill uh, so that they can then go to go upstairs and say, okay, what do we do in this circumstance? Stephen A., your take. Whose side are you on? Normally, I would never be on a player's side uh, from the standpoint that you sign a contract, you honor it. But all of that goes out the window when it comes to the National Football League because they do it to players all the time. You sign contracts, you sign, you give signing bonuses or whatever, you'll cut them, you'll waive them, you'll find a reason to get rid of them. Nobody does that better than the NFL. And so when you're a player, particularly considering how violent the sport is, you really, really do have to strike when the iron is hot and go for yours and do what you can to make the money that you believe you justifiably earned. In the case of Vernon Davis, however, um, even though I'm of that mindset and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and agree with him, at the same time, I do look at what Jerome Bettis just said in terms of him being having two years left. Uh, you could have at least showed your face to a mandatory uh, mini camp in June. It's not August where you've got to play in preseason games. It's not the start of, you know, a full throttle training camp. It's none of that. It's, it's just, it's a mini camp. Go there for a few days, show your face, show that this is a place where you want to be. Not just because you want to be there, but because despite the fact that nothing is more important than you, something just as important as you is going on. The San Francisco 49ers are no joke. These guys are legitimate Super Bowl title contenders. They have been the three straight NFC championship games. They've gone to a Super Bowl. They have been knocking and knocking and knocking on the door. Their defense is still elite. Offensively, you've got a couple of running backs. Colin Kaepernick's going to have to show up and do what they're paying him now to do. But if you're Vernon Davis, while wanting your money, you also have to understand that there's something that's going on here that's special and it's big and you have to make sure that you're not that big of a distraction in that regard. Showing your face at the mini camp would not have been that big of a deal. You didn't have to practice, but you could have at least showed your face. Okay, both you guys make good points and I think you're kind of on the fence on the issue. Let me just say, my bottom line is, I am not on Vernon Davis' side here. While I am usually, especially when it comes to the NFL, all about players getting paid as quickly and as much as they can get paid because of just how damaging this game is. But timing is everything, and his timing is all wrong to me. Let's, let's look back. 2010, he signs the biggest tight end contract in the National Football League. 
and in 11 and 12, he did not make the Pro Bowl. Last year, 13, he did make the Pro Bowl, and it was only his second in eight years. So we're not talking about superstar here. And then in last year's playoffs, we're talking about timing here. Yes. It, it, yeah. it, there, there wasn't much Vernon Davis sighting going on. <laughs> two, the game, the game two in Green receptions. Bay. Well, he got two for 37 at Green Bay. At Carolina, one catch for one yard. Again, he might have been triple team for all I know, but one catch right. for one yard. And then at Seattle, two catches for 16 two yards. For 16. Grand total, five catches for 54 yards with two touchdowns in three playoff games. Not superstar numbers that you put up. So timing is everything. Not not here. He's got no timing. Well, what leg does he have to stand on to miss an OTA or a mini camp? I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't really know what, what would well, provoke him now with two years left to say, I'm oh, underpaid. Yeah. Really? For what? Well, well wh wh where the numbers are going to go with Jimmy Graham, yeah. also, uh, it's, and with Gronk, you understand that uh, Gronkowski in, the, in New England, you understand that your numbers are are far lower than the the elite tight ends mm -hmm. in the game. Also, the fact that if I'm Vernon Davis, I'm, I'm 28 years old. I only have maybe two to three years okay. of a high level uh, playing ability left mm -hmm. in the NFL. So I've got to strike while the iron's hot. Now that's my argument for. Yeah. Uh, the argument against obviously is the two years, and and I say that because I held out as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I understand this with, process with what with year one year with one year uh, to go. When How I was old were with you? The, uh, I was young. I was with the Rams. Oh, okay. It was my First third time, year. Right. Okay, it was, I got yeah, it. It was, you know, my third year in the NFL. Uh, we had talked about um, uh, a deal. It never materialized, and so I felt had that that's what I needed to do. Had you outplayed your rookie deal? Absolutely. Okay. I was, you know, two years, two Pro Bowls, uh, you know. It was justified. It, it was justified. And so it was one of those situations that I felt I needed to make a stand. And I do understand Vernon Davis needing to make a stand, but you need to, you need to understand everything, the dynamics. You know, there's one other piece of this maybe that Vernon Davis is thinking about in the, in the sense that Kaepernick just got paid. It, there's probably exactly. going to be a couple okay. other guys get paid. He said, hey, I want to make sure I get uh, my piece of before course. it's all gone. Okay. You know. Crabtree is coming up Absolutely. this year. Right. Okay, but here's the bottom line question again. Has Vernon Davis outplayed his contract? Has he outperformed no. it? No. Five year, 30, no. No. what is it, 37, 37 million? Yeah. So no, I, he got 23 yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. I, can't, I, I can't say that he has. If, if he comes out this year and has another really good season, then I say, okay. yes, it's time right. to renegotiate the contract. I've got maybe two good years left. I need to be paid uh, what, I do, what I'm worth. So we are well, all in that mode the of one, show the, the, us, the, right? Wait, wait. The one, the one point that y'all might be missing about Vernon Davis, and this is almost blasphemous to me to say, and I, I must admit that because the man did have 52 receptions for 850 yards with us knowing that Colin Kaepernick still has room for improvement as a quarterback, even though we're all happy we, he got his money because he's a dual threat and he deserved it. Vernon Davis may not be scared of just getting hurt. He might be scared of getting shut down. Like you said, Skip, mm. two catches for 37 yards against Green Bay, mm. one catch, for one catch yard? against Carolina, all right? <laughs> and then after that, two catches for 16 yards against Seattle. Well, Green Bay's better, all right? Carolina is on the map now. Yep. And Seattle ain't going anywhere. And by the way, Arizona's coming. So it's just possible that he wants to strike right now because there's some question as to whether or not he's going to perform moving forward. Now, I don't mean to put him out on Front Street like that, but like you said, Skip, five receptions for 54 yards in the span of three playoff games, and you talk mm. about a contract extension, I don't blame him for trying to go for his money because Jimmy Graham is trying to get yeah. his two. I get that. I get that. But when you refuse to even show up to minicamp, you are now bringing unnecessary attention to yourself because it's because he didn't show up yesterday that we're sitting here and talking about this now. Had he showed up, Skip, we might not even be talking about it. If he just didn't participate, but he showed his face and he was looking to have his contract redone, I don't know if any of us are sitting here today going like this. Well, Vernon Davis had five receptions for 54 yards over the course of three games. It's because he refused to even participate and show his face yep. that we're like, wait a minute, 
What's up with you, bro? I mean, shoot, some could argue you didn't show up in Seattle in the NFC Championship game. So, do yeah, you yeah. expect him to hold out of training camp? I, 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 absolutely. Now, the, the line is drawn in the sand. Okay, so he, he can't go back. He has to. And, and, and when you look back, there's another case very similar to this, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. He decided to come into camp. He didn't work out. You see him with his with his uh, hoodie on, yeah. not saying anything. Everybody understands that there's a contract issue. He wants to to get paid. So there is there is the oh. other hey, side oh. of the coin as well. One quick note, Skip. The other day, man, we were at the finals, and you know we had we had one. It wasn't, we, we were never off, but in, in, in sometime in the afternoon, I think it was a Saturday afternoon. I forgot what day it was. <laughs> I'm clicking on the TV. And I, I turned to CNBC, because, you know, I got to monitor the money. You understand what I'm saying? I got to monitor the money, right? Yeah, you got to take care of your cash. <laughs> who's, who's there in the streets on Wall Street, Skip? It's Vernon Davis talking, talking with a bunch of financial dudes uh -huh. about dollars and cents and, and, and spend. And so, and so, in other words, he's about his money. Yeah, yeah. But Good point. you've got to be about performance, too. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe no, they told got, him. To, maybe they told him to hold well, out. Well, if you're hanging with the Wall Street guys, <laughs> they may have said. He's got Wall Street on his mind. Yeah. He's also and sold. I think he sold well, 10 percent of his uh oh, his, he did. his future he did. earnings yeah, as correct. well. So he's he's on the, the cutting uh, edge of of the financing. I'm not mad. Part. I'm not mad at him. No, I, not I respect at all. it. He just has to put. He just has he's to perform, Vernon. Yep. Vernon, you got a you got a ball. Jerome, you got a ball. We always appreciate you enlightening us. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Coming up next, what were you doing in the sixth grade?